Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and I'm pleased and honored to have our guest on to the show today. He is one of the two co-founders of the one of the newest organizations here in Calgary, and he's also the executive director. Dave Rutherford is the executive director of the Calgary Taxpayers Association. Dave, thank you so much for doing this. I'm looking forward to this uh, next hour of conversation. Sounds good. Chris, thank you very much for having me and having us on. It's, uh, it's wonderful. I've actually been looking forward to it as well. Oh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well. So I guess let, let's start with the million dollar question here. Calgary Taxpayers Association. What's this about? Because you've just officially launched, you have an upcoming event at City Hall later on next month. But what is the Calgary Taxpayers Association all about? What we are doing as the Calgary Taxpayers Association is we are an advocate for Calgary taxpayers. We are um, offering solutions to the spending and the public engagement of down at City Hall. That is it in a nutshell. That is the, what we're striving for, to, to be a voice for Calgarians. Um, <laughs> no, go ahead. Do not feel like we're getting a voice right now because we are coming up on the one year anniversary of this new council being elected October 25th, 2021 for anyone who remembers. Um, and you're launching now. So have you found this new council hasn't been transparent in some sense? And we'll talk about a little bit of transparency later on, but let's just talk about where the idea came from and why now? Why not four years from now? Why four years later? What, what, what about now? Our thought was it is time they're going, they're on Easter or on, sorry, Easter break. They're on their summer break right now and they go back September 1st. They start the, um, the budget deliberations and we felt it's time to offer solutions prior to that. Calgary is the only city major city in Canada that doesn't have a taxpayers association. Well, I didn't know that until we started digging into it, but Calgary is the only one that actually doesn't have a voice for Calgarians. So how do you, how do you plan to give a voice to a hundred thousand people in this city? Because everyone has a different voice and everyone has a different opinion. How do you see your organization getting the different voices together and advocating for the four pillars that we're going to be talking about smarter spending lower taxes reducing red tape and regulation and enhancing mm -hmm. transparency and accountability how do you see your organization being able to do that we're bringing board members on we're bringing um, community advocates on to join us to to be the voice of the uh, calgarians and i'll be the pitcher and of the, the voice up in front of people. I have no problem doing this. My involvement in, uh, believe it or not, radio 100 years ago, and um, or my public announcing at Shouldice Athletic Park, I've done all these different things. So I'm gonna be the voice in front of people. And it's a matter of different developers, different community leaders and getting them involved. And we'll do the asking of the questions. We'll find the solutions with them and get the word out and say, listen, this is what, you know, instead of spending $87 billion on climate change, I'm wholeheartedly in favor of climate change, but $87 billion, that's $62,000 per person or per uh, household. I mean, come on, if, if a small business could afford to put solar on his roof, a small business owner, he's going to do it in order to reduce his costs. But being forced to do it, I would put solar on my roof right now, if I could. I mean, it's it's not a cheap endeavor. Uh, Edmonton, the big convention center in Edmonton, they're adding, I think it's 1,500 panels to reduce the costs. It's huge. It's the largest uh, rooftop in uh, maybe Canada. I'm not sure exactly which, but I mean, it's insane that we're being forced to do it. So before we get into this current council and some of the issues, some of the spending issues that you may have, let's talk about yourself here, because you're a small business owner. You have uh, you've been involved in the community for some time. Uh, let's talk about 
why you believe this is an important step, why, why councils and uh, governments should be spending the money that ta of taxpayers smartly in this time of age, because we all know, everyone knows this, who's listening to this, who's watching this, inflation is up, cost of living is up, expenses are up, but and I, I say this with all sincerity, inflation always happens. Every cost of doing business always goes up. As a small business owner, as a small business owner myself, I know that last year's expenses are not going to be this year's expenses because they're always going to be up. So how do you come into this picture? How do you come into this picture and say what's going on with this government spending is a little bit outside of their purview and they need to be reined in with an organization like this? It almost seems like they have their own political agenda in some cases where to get down to the bread and butter of the actual household income, the actual house, the, I met with a lady who was at one of the food banks in one of the communities. She works two jobs, two kids, and she can't afford to keep the lights on. And she was at the food bank picking money or picking food up. I mean, it's like, Come on, why are we spending on certain things when we should focus on the people? Public safety, I mean, that's big right now, what's going on in the, in the city. Uh, but spending the money on the public safety aspect of it. I mean, let's gear it towards things that are needed and not things like the $100,000 to that Bill C-21 in Quebec. Why do, why do we send to fight that legal, what's it got to do with us? It's true, but let's, I'm going to play a little bit devil's advocate with you, Dave, because I feel like you and I have this reputation already, only knowing each other for less than, <laughs> less than 15 minutes. I feel like we can play devil's advocate here. Um, that's politicians though. Politicians, politicians. Po politicians make, the, they, they were elected in October. Um, and some people might be looking at this organization saying, why weren't you advocating for this then? We needed an organization to advocate because we weren't in this situation of high inflation and all that. But you, you seem like a very politically astute man that knows what he's doing and knows what he wants and knows that you need to start a campaign to get people up and running. So why why it's why now because the politicians got elected they have the right to mandate what they want to spend things on but it may not be in line with you so how do you balance that because you have three years until the next election to actually yeah. change this government so is it just trying to get get the conversation going to actually say you know what Smart spending is the appropriate thing, especially when the economics of this city, this country, this province are in a complete shambles. Exactly. Uh, approximately two months ago, we sat around a dining room table and started talking about it. And yes, we should have done it a year ago because leading up to the election in the last October. Yeah. We decided, okay, let's go. And then we came up with the idea, okay, they're going on summer break. Let's roll this out September 13th. Let's start getting people involved, start talking to, we're actually setting meetings up. Uh, one of the counselors just confirmed a meeting now. Oh, wow. So we're, we've got a handful of the, the counselors are meeting with us. We're reaching out to Mayor Gondrecht as well. We're meeting with uh, some MLAs and federal ministers as well, just to discuss with them what's going on. And so what, is, what is going waited. on? What is going on? Because I, 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 I guess we should have talked about that because you talked about the climate emergency, about the climate plan that they've passed. But on the flip side, they've introduced more uh, uh, sprawl into the city. So that way we're growing and we're going to offset some of the uh, costs that we're increasing with more people hopefully coming in and buying houses. So what is going on in the city that is concerning to you and to the organization, not just you? When I say you, I mean the royal you as in the organization. Exactly. So just for those exactly. who are I'll yelling at the screen right now. <laughs> well, I, I do take it personally. So that's, I think, why I decided as the executive director is I'm taking it personally and and I, I'm going to be that voice, but there's nothing wrong with the urban sprawl. I mean, I've 
I was born in Montreal. Montreal is a massive, massive city uh, and all of its surroundings. Um, I visited many cities throughout the States where the urban sprawl is, and there's nothing wrong with it. As long as you're, you have the police, the fire, and are we spending on, no, we're cutting those guys back. My dad was a policeman. So we're cutting on them when, I mean, how long is it going to take to get a fire truck to one of these new communities? They're building the houses so close to try to save the money. Now that's the developer. But one house burns, another goes up with it. There was a fire, I don't even know which community yesterday, older community, it didn't affect the other houses. So it's, we got to spend the money where it's needed, not where they think it's needed. Like the, I'll give you another small example that when security is definitely a number one priority, especially as an elected official, but every council member received an $8,000 security system on the city's bill that when they were elected. Well, that's 120,000. I don't know about the monthly monitoring, but do you think that that's two people's wages at minimum wage, two, maybe three. That lady that I saw at the food bank, do you think you know she could have used that kind of money? She doesn't need to go out and work a third job, but it's that type of spending, just frivolous spending that just doesn't make sense in, in some cases. So we're going to be that advocate. So what, like you talk about safety and security, you talked about firefighters, you talked about police, which is understandable, but what else? Because let's dig down into smart spending. Is it infrastructure? Is it roads? Is it because if you go talk to people in Whitehorn, where I'm from, and you go talk to people in Bone Nest, you're going to hear completely different options on what they would like to see spent, their smarter spending. And that is my concern is how do you how do you advocate for everyone without advocating for just at a select few, just, right? Just being laser focused or without having tunnel vision. Yeah. Every community is going to be different, without a doubt. Every community is, you know, Bonus, I'm going to an event, a, a small business owners event tomorrow night. Um, they're opening, you know, a, a soft opening to just expand. And I'll talk to them and say, you know, what's going on on the streets here? What are you guys doing? You know, yeah, it may be the sidewalks. Um, Bonus has done a great job of, of beautification. Whitehorn, I mean, You've got the LRTs and everything going around through uh, Whitehorn. You never know what each community. And we'll take all of those and evaluate them on what is really important. If the same item keeps coming up numerous times, well, yeah, obviously it's an issue and from, from numerous people. And I, I think the one big thing, and this this affects every homeowner, and I, I don't care who you are, you all get a tax bill at the in June. Yeah, well, you get the assessment in March, you get your bill in June, and you go, <laughs> yeah. how did this go up two thousand dollars? And exactly. I did not do anything to my house. Um, Again, going back to our small business uh, backgrounds here, you and myself, uh, you know that is cost of living goes up. So how do you lower taxes knowing that you have to spend smartly, but also spend smartly enough that you have to cut costs and that means might have to cut services? You, you may, however, cutting, lowering taxes, taxes are never going away. No. <laughs> we all wish, we all would What? Love Dave, you're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> Okay, sorry, time to leave. Um, but holding them, holding the taxes and saying, okay, as a small business owner, if my vehicle is breaking down, you take it to get fixed. Mm -hmm. We don't go out and buy new vehicles. We don't need new police cruisers. Maybe yeah. we hire some more, some more mechanics to go fix them. Let's get some more people working. Oh, Dave, you just you just hit a very bad bone with me because as a former <laughs> municipal employee myself for a small community up in northern Alberta, which shall not be nameless, but everyone should know what it is by now. Uh -huh. um, I've seen 
counselors do that. After yeah. five years, a truck that only has 20,000 kilometers, well, we need a new truck because this truck doesn't is not going to run. Exactly. I, uh, <laughs> uh, fire truck. Does it still pump water? Yeah. Does it, do you do an oil change? Do you do you buy new buses because they're not working, or do you just put them in the mechanics bay and and fix it? Yeah. I have a former uh, friend of the family that is a, a transit um, mechanic. That's what he does. He has his own bay. He, all day. That's what he does is fix them. And and this isn't just a Calgary thing, no. And I I shouldn't no. say this. This is all municipalities because we we tend to re, we think that we all need this shiny new object when we're a government because we need to put our best foot forward. And I've heard this from many councillors and many Reeves and many mayors from across this province and uh, this country that we need to always look good to our people because it needs to look like we're not a worn down city. But you get to a smarter point here, Dave, where you talk about. We don't need to completely overhaul. We need to patch. And I know sometimes patching it can cost a little bit more because costs add up and add up, that mm -hmm. add up. But in a time of fiscal restraint, which we all should be in, and I think mm -hmm. everyone is, hopefully, uh, potentially not council and federal government, but we're talking about Calgary, not the federal government here. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, we seem to not remember that exactly how do you advocate for that and do you think councillors and politicians are willing to hear that message a constant specific agenda follow the same mantra yep and tell it takes 10 15 times to, to beat it into someone's head to for them to understand i mean mr and mrs jones you're fixing your vehicles. You're you're patching your roof before you spend twenty five thousand on a new roof. Mm -hmm. You're you know think of it as a business owner. You, you as a family owner or the, the the head of the family. You you find the money and you make sure you maintain it. Do we change our furnace filters? Yeah, you know it's those little things that if we keep the same focus. Over the next three years, and we're hoping that we gather all that people and that the existing councillors understand this. I, I had the and opportunity. Start thinking that way. I had the opportunity to sit down with. I would say about. I want to say about four to six of the current councillors, including okay. the mayor, during the municipal election, because during the municipal election, we tried to sit down with a lot of councillors because we right. always forget about those council elections and we always worry about the mayor election. Right. And the common thing that I found with a lot of these uh, councillors that are newly elected, but also the councillors who, who candidates who were running to be councillor was, I want to go over the budget with a fine tooth comb. I want to see where everything's being spent. But Anyone who's followed politics, you know, that very first budget you get thrown at because it's the budget that's left over from the previous administration. Mm -hmm. And this new budget is the big budget. This is the budget that is going to be put forth for four years because in Calgary, we have a four year budget cycle. Yep. You have a large task to try to get counselors to see that we need to smart spend. We need to lower taxes because people are struggling. Um, you're meeting with councillors, as you've said already. You have a lot of ground to cover. The board is getting set. You're a new organization. Can you do it? Can you yes. do it? And are you going to be looking at the budget as it's proposed as well? Because there's a lot of people who would say, are you just doing this for a vanity project? Or are you actually going to be on the ground at the council chambers when they're deliberating budget and looking at this budget as well? Exactly. I'm, I'm going to personally go in and sit down and just listen with the budget in hand. Um, yeah, I'm a big believer of PL. I go through a PL with a fine tooth comb and cut costs wherever I can. Mm -hmm. You know, if why am I having office cleaning every week? Let's do it three times a week. And the staff can, you know, th those little things, those little things. You got to treat it. So, yes, we have a lot to do. Yes, we have uh, quite a bit to do starting. Well, we've already started. So let, let me say that. What's the, 
because we can't talk about the climate change because it's already passed and it's probably going to be there for a while. What's the biggest thing you're looking for, the organization, the Calgary Taxpayers Association, looking for in this next budget? Where would you like to see uh, smart spending start at? Because you probably have ideas and everyone else has ideas of where things can be cut, whether it be council expenses or going on massive trips to AMAs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And because everything's virtual now, where would you like to see things cut? And I shouldn't say cut, cut? but no. redistribute it or Re- right. smart that spending. Me. Redistribute that money to public safety and public engagement. You know, Calgary's going through, I mean, 91 shootings. I mean, we had 50, what is it, 52 last year, this time, this same time last year. Something's got to be done to help transit. I mean, when, when transit and the police... If you want to go buy drugs, jump on the train. I mean, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And it's common knowledge. So we need that safety. We need to get the people going back on transit. We need the people, you know. I mean, where, the- where would you redistribute it from? Because um, there's a lot of people who would advocate for safe injection sites downtown to get people off the train, the transit system into the downtown core. Would you be saying, okay, let's start with that. Let's start with taking some money in from maybe be from policing or enforcement and putting into a safe injection site. So we could start hopefully cleaning out uh, people who are using drugs in your words on the, on the trains and transit system. Public safety includes what you just said police fire and getting people off the street. I mean, we've got all the buildings there. They've already started doing, putting these suites in some of the buildings downtown, which is a great idea, you know, but eventually those businesses hopefully will come back and downtown could be vibrant again. We all hope, I mean, but maybe we dedicate, maybe the building dedicates two floors and 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 then lease the rest out to the, the companies i mean there's always a solution i mean it's are you willing to look outside the box because it exactly. seems it seems like you're willing to look outside the box and you're willing to accept other ideas from people because that's how the, everything works we always accept the best ideas and try to make them our own and then we yeah. roll off on the end yeah. how do we the Calgary Taxpayers Association, they are, uh, you are working to smart spend, lower taxes. Your board directors, I want to talk about them for a few seconds, if possible, and yeah. getting the best people around that table. How, how is recruitment going? Do you have a full board? Is it, uh, or can you tell me some of the people who are on I, the board with I you? I won't tell you who at the moment, because we're still talking with them. Um but anyone from a community leaders, such as community association leaders, um, we have talked to some developers and some of the building, the bigger builders in, in the city on, you know, their thoughts and stuff. And that will be who's sitting on the, this board. Will it be from all part walks of life? Because in your vision statement for the Calgary Taxpayers Association, it's a stronger, fairer, smarter city that leaves no Calgarian behind. And to say that, you have to make sure that you have people from all backgrounds, right? Exactly. Seniors. Let's talk to some seniors, veterans. Even some young people. What about some of these, you know... What about renters? Would you talk to renters? Why wouldn't you talk to a renter? Um, Junior achievement people, you know, some of those those young junior achievers, get them involved in this kind of stuff. Talk to the developers and, you know, as we go up the change and what you said about thinking outside the box, my whole career has been thinking outside the box. Uh, when I was employed, when I had my own businesses, you think outside the box. There, there's no harm in stealing a good idea. As long as you credit it correctly. That's what I've always been told. We we used to call it shared technology. (laughs) You you share that technology. One area that you you talked about uh, a little bit at the beginning, but I wanted to roll back here for a few seconds, is red tape. We always hear about this red tape. 
And, and let's be honest, it's not actually red tape. It's just a no. coin that someone brought up and it's just red tape. For you, what does red tape mean for my listeners? So that way they can understand where you're, the organization's coming from. So that way we can talk a little about this a little bit more. We have a family friend that lives a few doors down that um, she's a former city employee. And when I mentioned the Taxpayers Association to her, she said, we need to get rid of the seven levels that everyone has to go through and seven different people have to touch or, or, or departments have to touch to get something done. Why is it seven? I have dealt with and used Six Sigma. I'm not sure if you're aware of what Six Sigma is. Six Sigma is the process to take a hundred items that take, it takes a hundred items to get something done and reduce that down to 25 by somebody doing, you know, three of those steps and reducing the steps needed. It's called, it's, it's, it's huge. Six Sigma is very large. Uh, I used it with a company years ago and I became the novice level of green belt with Six Sigma. And it's, it's a process of eliminating the red, the red tape <laughs> that's not officially red. So we all think bureaucracies are larger than yeah. they, they should be. I think there's a lot of uh, Calgarians who I talked to during the municipal election who say that exact statement. We need to cut bureaucracy because I always go to City Hall and I get passed to this person who gets passed to this person who gets passed to this person, so on and so forth. And then by the time you end it, you're like, I don't even know what my original question was. I'm just going to go home and try to figure it out again. Exactly. Um, while we are in a economic downturn, it's always hard to cut staff because a staff is a person. And I, I, worked for, I worked for an organization that did not look at it that way. They looked at the uh, as the title. You are a title and that's it. You don't have a name to that title. You are a title on the spreadsheet of the budget. While you probably don't want to go around firing 60,000 people or 40,000 people, how do you reduce regulation, red tape, bureaucracy, while trying to make sure people have a fair, equal shot at getting ahead in this time? I believe, and I've thought of this, is each department, be it parks, be it whichever, no. Don't let people go. Do not let people go. But how can we reduce the spending? I, and I don't have that answer right now, but how do we reduce the steps without letting people go? When I was on the committee that we were building Shouldice at Lillard Park, we went through so many different city staffers to get Shouldice done. And why? And does everyone, does any counselor or any bureaucrat ever tell you why there's so much? Because no. I think there's a lot of people who are thinking that exact same question. Why is there so much and why can't anyone tell me exactly. why there's a manager for two managers? Exactly. So the people that the city has now, they find their role and keep their job. And let's, you know, find out where we can cut. Like we said earlier about fixing the police cars, fixing the fire trucks. Let's hire a few more mechanics, maybe. Yeah. Instead of spending $40,000 on our new patrol car. You know, you, they're not getting a deal on the new Ford. <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on. Um, we, as a Calgarian myself, we always look at the budget as a city budget, but there's so many instrumental parts of that budget because you think about the budget, but then there's the city, but the Calgary Police Services budget, which is their own separate entity, but yeah. it still gets its funding from the city. Um, there is currently, you talked about, uh, uh, and I know this is probably a little bit of an uh, oddball question here, and I'm going to ask it anyway, but there has been talks about unifying the police force within Alberta into one top 
down provincial police force because if it's good for Calgary, it should be good for the rest of us. And I don't want to put you on the spot. If you don't want to talk about it, we'll continue on. Um, Should we do this? Because we want to cut costs. We want to smart spend. So would this be an area that the Calgary Taxpayers Association might be interested in looking at? I don't think we dabble into it because it's a more of a provincial matter. Nope. As a son of a of a policeman, um, it you know to have the actual boots on the ground, city police, somebody that lives in the neighborhood. Yeah, I think that would be a much better scenario. Yep. Both Calgary and Edmonton, the RCMP do a great job in all the rural communities where where they can. I mean, there's that's a tough patrol as it would be. But, uh, you know, I, that's the touchy subject. That no, and on. understandable. And I don't want to put you on the spot. And I don't, I didn't mean to. It's just, you were bringing it up. And I guarantee you there's someone listening to this on the deer foot who's driving down and said, why don't you ask him about the police force of Alberta? So then I can say I did. And then you can't yell at me and send me nasty emails that everyone sends me for some strange reason. But here we are. Um, I, I want to turn to the last point that you're, you're trying to do with this organization, the Calgary Taxpayers Association. And that's enhancing transparency and accountability. The big one that every politician under any situation always says, we need more communication, we need more transparency, we need to be accountable to the people who vote for us. Um, So, (laughs) I start this in saying that, where do we start? Where should this council start in being more transparent and more accountable to the people who have voted for them? Honesty and upfront. Yep. Big words from, you know, from a politician. Those would be, you know, they they want to keep their cards close to their chest. But why are they doing certain things? Everybody has a reason for making a decision on something, but let's be transparent with it. Everybody, you know, as a business owner or a a manager, I would always include staff on what the decisions were. Why are we doing this? And that goes a long way. Listen, we're we're gonna go this direction because the end game is this is this. So if if council and this current administration can get that in and start saying, okay, Calgarians, we're doing this for this reason and not we're doing this. So a little devil's advocate here again, because yet again, that's what I like to do on the show. If I was a city councilor or if I was the mayor or if I was someone in city hall right now, I'd say, well, we are at, at tax time. We send you a little brochure with all where your money goes with a little dollar symbol. And it shows how much of your dollar is sent to each department. So what else can we do? How more transparent can we be? Because we are tr- we can try and be as transparent as possible, but there's going to be that one person who says, well, I didn't hear it or I didn't get that memo. So I didn't think you were being transparent or accountable. How much more would you like to see from them? They do the community engagements when they're doing something within a community they do the the round tables at community halls with their maps and maybe more of those uh they, the counselor needs to maybe get out the counselors you know some of the newsletters that are going out community newsletters instead of talking about how much traffic's going down crotels let's talk about well what about the feeders and doing all this let's be much more transparent on what's going on first. Well, we're going to do this, but we've, we've talked to everybody we can. I mean, they do these surveys. I can manipulate a survey any way we want, right? Do, do not say that, Dave. We do not manipulate anything in this world. Never, <laughs> never. No. But, I mean, you get these, and you're only thinking it for yourself. But isn't, well, I don't like the amount of cars that are going down my street. Isn't it a bottom de- bottom up solution though? Because how can how can councillors and mayors be accountable and transparent if someone's not asking the question, right? And we have media, and I try to ask questions. I try to bring on councillors. If my local councillor wants to come on, I've at, requested an invite, but seems like that's not happening anytime soon. Um, but 
if we aren't asking the questions, and I think this is where your organization is going to be coming in a little bit. Uh -huh. If if we ask the questions, then people will be more accountable and more transparent about what's going on. Um, should should it just be at the feet of your organization to do that, though? Should we not be at looking to all Calgarians to start asking the tough questions of their politicians, not even just here uh, federally or municipally, but provincially and federally and even school board as well? Everybody should. Everybody should. My wife works in the school board uh, in the school board system. And oh, boy, <laughs> let's not, not even get that, those questions going. But it's a matter of invert that pyramid where everything or the funnel, you know, we've all heard the funnel technique where it all comes down to that point. Well, everybody's got to get at the top of that pyramid and start asking. I mean, February, what's the, what's the one questions. question we should be asking? What is the questions that we should be asking from? Because while you'll be doing that, like what are the questions that you want to pose to these counselors right now? Like while we can talk about the 86 billion for climate change, it's already been passed. Uh, I think it, it wasn't, it was, it was not a unanimous vote, but what are the questions that are on the top of your mind right now and saying, okay, this is what we need to be doing. How are you going to spend this money? That's the number one question. How are you going to spend it? And how can, you know, here's a solution. Yes, okay, this is needed. But can we do it this way? I don't have an example, but can we do it this way? Are you not yelling yeah. into the void, though? Are you not yelling into the void? Because... I've met many politicians. I've had many politicians on this yeah. show. Um, they are in a microcosm of their followers. They like what they want to hear, and that's all they want to hear. When someone else comes in and says, hey, maybe do it this way, are you not yelling into the void? And are you hoping, like you said, talk about talk about it over and over and over until it sinks in. It's kind of, and I hate to put the analogy out there, but it's like talking to a five-year-old kid, right? You just have to hit hard over and over and over again until you find the kid finally says, oh, the oven is hot. I'm not going to put my hand there. Is it yelling into a microcosm until someone, at least even one counselor, stands up and says, you know what, maybe it is time to start thinking smarter. And, and with enough people that we're working with, as, and we get enough people on board, we're all going to be that voice. And that's our whole goal, is adding and adding and adding more voice. We're doing surveys. We're going to, where the website's up and about to go, and we're going to start asking questions, little, little surveys and asking, you know, what do you think? Every community, like we said, is going to be different. And you're going to get some, you know, some off the wall things, but our goal is to focus those things on. In, you know, your, in your short time, in the two months that you've been, this, this, the Calgary Taxpayers Association has been founded and growing. Mm -hmm. Have there been things that you've been surprised that you've been hearing about? Are there things that you're like, whoa, I didn't think this was an issue. And I'm glad someone brought this to my attention, whether it be um, I want more parks in my area because I have to walk my kid five blocks to get to my closest park. And there's one dilapidated swing set on there because trust me, in White Ward 10, there's some pretty rundown parks up here. Yep. And I, I mean that with respect to the parks department, but maybe we get some little <laughs> updates here. But are, are there things that you're surprised about when you're talking to that mother at the food bank or that, that father who is playing sports with their kid at the basketball, uh, I was going to say diamond, but it's not a diamond, basketball no, court. Basketball court yeah. yeah. Are there things that you've been shocked at so far? Some of the infrastructure where the kids skateboarding down the street and the sidewalk has got a big and they go flying, um, you know, we're, we're great at fixing potholes for some reason. Are we, are we really? Are we? They, they, they'll tell you they are, but it's those, you know, yes, parks. Yes, the, the rundown park that the swings are falling off. Why are, why? Like yeah. if the parks department went around and just 
put a bolt in that swing, it would be fixed. Yeah. You know, the, the signs that are, are the sign poles that are loose and, and wobbling around. It, fix and maintain as you would your home. Yeah. And I, I always find those it, are the things I'm hearing. I always find it interesting. And I want to get your perspective on this as this as the executive director of the organization. Councils have always been reactive. They've always reacted to issues, whether it be the vandalism, because I'm not sure in your part of the city, but out here in uh, the Northeast, uh, bus shelters were getting smashed on a regular basis over the last few months. I think it started about November last year, all the way till probably at last one I saw was about two months ago, but it was getting really bad. We saw the smashing of uh, the Peace Bridge or Confederation Bridge or whatever, mm -hmm. the, the yeah, Red Bridge. Bridge, yeah, Peace Bridge downtown. We are reacting to scenarios where violence and uh, vandalism and petty crimes like this, and I say petty crimes not in the sense that it's just a small inconvenience because it does cost the taxpayers a lot of money. And it does cost a lot of people to go out, survey the damage, and then order new repairs. And it doesn't, as things go up, it doesn't cost the city the same amount to install it than it did now. Exactly. How do we, like we talk about, and I get back to this uh, CPS issue and the enforcement issue. There has been calls for defund the police. There have been calls for less yeah. funding for the police, especially from even within this council. Um, it's a tough hill you're going to be climbing to balance enforcement, but also not saying you want to yeah. completely give the whole budget of the Calgary uh, City Hall to the Calgary Police Services. Unfortunately, the police can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. When bus belt, you know, um, the Peace Bridge, they did get that person on camera and, I, you know, I believe there was a mental issue that and why he he did that. Uh, it's unfortunate, but can we not find a solution instead of the glass? Now the architecture and, you know, we got to look at different ways to. And that's what I mean by being more proactive, right? Instead of yeah. reacting to everything, oh, we just have to go reinstall it, but proactive and say, what what can we put in there that's not going to be easily smashed right right i <laughs> i have always looked at six p's and i see your eyes go six p's what's he gonna say I, uh, I'm, I'm ready for the i'm ready for them right yeah, i'm ready, ready for this <laughs> proper planning prevents piss poor performance i'm not gonna write that down <laughs> do we need a better planner do we need, so. because they are going to be doing their budget. They're going to be going into their strategic planning as well, because they want to uh, make sure that they're advancing the city, not just for one, but for everyone. And the strategic planning sessions are usually the where most of the budget comes out of, because it tells you where their priorities are and who they want, where they want to see the money flow to. Um, planning is a big thing and it's something that businesses do families have to do like everyone has to do on a regular basis how do we plan for the future when we don't know what the future looks like i believe some of the take some of the pie in the sky thoughts and develop a plan i mean we've all got to develop a plan i remember seeing a, a map of calgary a concept of calgary and it was almost like that wheel, like of Paris, France. And it was, it was an idea that was when Calgary was first being developed. And as we do this, we've got to think of what the infrastructure, how are, we, how are we going to get to these new communities? You know, they've got to look at these kind of things and, and think of 25, 30 years from now, Crow Child Trail going over the river. Yes, they expanded the bridge and tried to make it as wide as possible. It's still a bottleneck. Try going to a football game. Up by the 24th and up, you know, they, it, everything goes to two lanes. I 30, have done numerous ago. trips on, uh, I think it's 16th, to the Tom Baker Cancer Center over the last few years. So I know that area quite well, and it is a gong show, and they were doing some uh, construction to renovate it to alleviate that, but I think it actually caused more of an issue because it just every day it seemed like there was a new issue that was going on there. Exactly. And it's, 
like 40 years ago, why didn't they think, you know, Calgary might have a million or 2 million people. This road is going to, going over a river is going to need to be bigger. My wife's house, she was grew up in the army or as an army grad. Her house was in the middle of Crochow Trail at one time. And I mean, right across from the parade square. And, you know, now it's a six lane thoroughfare, but you go down those six lanes to two. We need to think a little bit, you know, further ahead when these kind of things come out and, and think of what's Calgary going to be like with 2 million people. How's transit? You know, we're at what, 1.2, 1 1.3? Add 1 to 1.5 1 with the surrounding communities. It's going to be interesting, to say the least. To say the very least. Do politicians, in your mind, forget that the money that they spend are taxpayers' dollars? Sometimes. I think they do. Really? I, I, I truly think they, they forget. Same as some corporations they might just say, oh, we're, you know, yeah, sure, just go and buy that. You know, you got to back up and say, hold on a second. Let's let's monitor this. Let's see where we're spending it. And let's stop, you know, and be more community focused. What's going on in the average Joe's household? How are they surviving? And how are people surviving right now? Because this, this uh, I, I got my tax bill and I can tell you I was not happy with my increase. And as much as councils tried to say it's going to be a small increase, it's still an increase and an increase mm -hmm. of increase. And I understand cost of living does go up. Things happen and things do go up. Services costs go up. Police budgets go up. I understand that. I'm one of these smart people who understands that. I, I, but I also agree that we need to spend smartly, especially in economic downturn. But I also think that we need to save. And this is the key phrase, right? We always forget about putting money away for the rainy day. The rainy day when things go shitty sideways, we always forget that we need to put money away. Are you advocating for more savings, more uh, putting money away for future generations and not just for tomorrow? Because we, if we do see another oil boom, that's great, which we are seeing right now. But if we see a collapse, then we're screwed again and we have to figure out how we're going to pay for things that we're relying on the oil industry right now. As a condo owner or townhouse owner, of course, any condominium association has their reserve funds. Mm -hmm. And to be able to put that money away for the, you know, the rainy day, we used to have the heritage fund, right? <laughs> the, the provincially, heritage. yes. Yeah, yeah, provincially, yeah. But we could have spending. We just came in with that hundred and, well, they said $147 billion or million dollar surplus. And then some reason the accounting we looked at the numbers and it's 105. Well, sorry, that accountant wouldn't be working for me anymore <laughs> if he if he actually announced 40 million dollars just mysteriously yeah, disappeared. Just disappeared, yeah. I mean, sorry, Mr. Accountant, but um, where did that money go and why are you reporting it? Yeah. But I mean, how the million dollar question, how do you spend that? Or do we put it away towards next year's budget? or the next four year budget, or we're gonna end up with surpluses. And I think that comes down to where your organization comes into play, right? Because exactly what's you, 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 you are advocating, and I know we've covered a lot in the last 45 minutes of this discussion, but I found it so fascinating. And I feel like we jumped around a lot, but I feel like we, we, hmm. we hit a lot of the good points here because we, and I, Yet again, when you think of the Calgary Taxpayers Association, people might automatically think of the Calgary Taxpayers Federation. Mm -hmm. And are you associated with them in any way? Can you say that or no? Or are you a separate entity in yourself? We're a separate entity. Uh, we have not talked to them, but they are on our list to talk to. So we're, we're talking to many people right now. They, they are, our phones are blowing up with replies to emails. Uh, with appointments uh, with the councillors. Uh, we're penning a letter to Mayor Gondek 
uh, shortly, probably over the weekend, we'll pen a mail, uh, letter to her asking for a meeting with her, but also asking her to host a summit with the police department to, to look at this guns and violence right off the bat. Like they've got to sit down and do something about it because we know it's a gang, something gang war is going on. Nobody outside of those, that lifestyle is going to know what's going on, but the police do. I mean, the police do. So even ask to speak with those leaders. We did it back when they, we had the problem in the eighties. They talked to those leaders and then everything finally calmed down, but something's going on and the mayor has to host a summit and figure out what to do. So to leave on this great conversation, because I know we could probably talk for another few hours about this, yeah, because, <laughs> but I, I want to, I want, because yet again, I can ask all the questions I have, but then at the end of the day, someone's going to be watching this or listening to this and say, why didn't you ask them this question? Because I'd really like to know a little bit more about this information. So how can people get in contact with the Calgary Taxpayers Association? How can people learn more? Because I know you talked about the website, which will be linked in the show notes. It's not active yet because I checked it before yeah. recording yeah, it. It's about to be. But it will be in the short, uh, but the links to uh, the Facebook and uh, the Twitter page as well. But how can they reach out to you in general? Through the website. I've actually got the contact. I've actually an administrator on them. We've just, I just accepted the launch of the Facebook as well. So that's Rutherford YYC. Everything's going to be Rutherford YYC. And I will be answering and on those emails all the time. Uh, it, uh, my phone's right here with the, uh, I have my own page dedicated to uh, all the different social media platforms. And when we post one thing, it's going to everything. And can people sign up to be a member? Like, it, does it cost, does it cost a little bit of money There's, to be a right member? Now we haven't gone to the, any costs yet. We are setting the page up. Uh, we're look, we're going to look for donors. We can, to run the, the facility or to run the organization. So we're looking at all these different um, ways of maneuvering this, this whole thing. And as we get closer to September 13th, we're the, so let's, the, the weights on my shoulders now. <laughs> so let's talk about September 13th. September 13th, you are officially, while this is coming out in August, you are officially launching the organization on September 13th. I will be down there with my trusty camera and my uh, recorder to record some events just to make sure we cover the story as well. But um, what can we expect? Is it just an official launch where you're going to be talking about the organization, talking about how people can get involved, or what can we expect from that? You nailed every point of it right off the bat. We're, we're talking about how to get involved. We're talking about the, you know, what we're asking for, what we're asking for from council, you know, from the smarter spending to the lower taxes to the reducing the red tape and, you know, making things more accountable and the transparency. We're going to roll it all out and say, hey, this is what we're doing. We're inviting all media outlets to, to get involved. Uh, as many people as we can bring down to City Hall as that we can. Like I said at the beginning, I have no problem speaking in front of people. I've stood on the field at McMahon Stadium and uh, with no problems at all. I mean, these are, I almost thrive on it. My wife will tell you, yeah, he never shuts up. But <laughs> you, you seem to enjoy it. You seem to enjoy it and you seem to be able to talk and communicate with a passion. Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess my last question is this, Dave. My very last question is this. Uh, yes, the, the wag of the pen here. As a former journalist, I take notes and I always I wag. But a... Tell me, why does journalists always hold the pen like this? They're not because, writing anything. No, because they're like, okay, what are you going to say stupid so we can write it down so we can pull that 15 second clip from you? So that's why. That's how I always do. Day you've taken, you know, your little notes. The, you know, those days are now voice and voice recorders. And... I I still do notes, man. I still do notes. Um, but my last question is this. What have we not talked about that you want to make sure the people who are listening to this, who are watching this now, later, understand about the Calgary Taxpayers Association? That we're, we're gearing our whole focus in the next month and then going forward over the next three years of how is the money being spent? 
when the person that pays their rent, their mortgage, their fuel costs, and they're, they're wondering, well, maybe I can put $10 worth of gas in today. I mean, gas has come down a bit, but it's probably going back up. But it's how can I spend this money on food or put the lights on? Council, how are we going to maintain our city, but move forward with proper spending and effective spending? Well, Dave, I hope we accomplish that. I hope you and the Calgary Sorry. Taxpayers Association does get off the ground and makes a difference because while we all may disagree on how money should be spent, it always comes down to this. And I always say this and not, not always say this, but I always remind people whenever I talk to people off the record, but the money that government spend are, is ours. So we should be asking questions about how our money is being spent and where it's being spent and why it's being spent in certain areas. So I wish you the best of luck because right. I think there's organizations like you that need to be out there to ask these tough questions. And I hope council councillors or in mayor actually addresses them in a manner that people understand and want answers for. We're, we're gonna be the voice for Calgarians and gather that information for Calgarians. Well, Dave, I wanna thank you so much for doing this. I wanna remind my listeners and my viewers, if you uh, want to follow the Calgary Tax Service, uh Association, I was gonna say Federation, but it's Association, please scroll down in the show notes, the links to their Facebook, Twitter, and website are there. Uh, there you can find Dave's email address, his contact information, I'm assuming as well on the website. So please, 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 please reach out. If you wanna learn more about this great organization, please reach out because uh, we need more people involved in democracy. And this is one of the great organizations that could be involved in democracy. So get involved, learn a little bit more and just enjoy yourself. Dave, thank you so much for doing this. You are very, very welcome. And thank you for having us. And I will end everything with let's go Calgary, Calgary first. Exactly. So with that, I want to thank everyone for listening and watching today's episode. We will be back tomorrow for another great episode. And I want to remind everyone, get out from behind social media for at least 15 minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It makes our democracy, it makes our society, it makes us better as a people. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking.